Welcome to Marvel Medicine. My name is Dr. Chaudhry, and this lecture is on achalasia, one of the most important gastrointestinal disorders, particularly the esophagus. So if you're a USMLE student, especially taking step one, you need to listen carefully. So let's start. The word achalasia is composed of two parts. A, which means no, chalasia, which means relaxation. So you can now guess that achalasia means loss of relaxation in a part of the esophagus. But which part is it? And how does this happen? Achalasia occurs here, at the very lower end of the esophagus, which is called the lower esophageal sphincter. This sphincter is normally closed. When we eat something, a wave of peristalsis is created to push the food downwards towards the stomach. This peristalsis consists of two opposing actions, contraction superior or cephala to the food and relaxation of the wall inferiorly or caudad until the food reaches the lower esophageal sphincter. Normally, the lower esophageal sphincter relaxes to allow food passage into the stomach. What happens in achalasia is that the lower esophageal sphincter fails to relax in response to normal peristalsis. Now, you can probably predict the first complication of achalasia, which is accumulation of solids and liquids inside the esophagus, and dysphagia. Notice that there's dysphagia to both solids and liquids in case of achalasia. This is different from obstruction due to esophageal cancer in which dysphagia occurs exclusively to solids, not liquids. This dilated esophagus, which can be called mega esophagus, appears as a bird's beak on barium swallow. Accumulated foods will cause inflammation of the esophagus, which predisposes to esophageal carcinoma. You can also predict the symptoms of achalasia, which include dysphagia, which is difficulty swallowing, regurgitation of food, weight loss, and some other uh, uh, you know, pain behind the sternum. 